Hello, I'm Gil Zilka. Welcome to my channel. This is my series entitled Essential Classical Music, where we look at the best recordings of the major classical music works. This video is taken from my larger video entitled uh, Best Recordings of Orchestral Works, uh, where I look at uh, basically all orchestral music uh, that is not including the symphonies or the concertos. So if you like this video, I hope you'll take the time to view that one as well. Uh, just know that uh, it is divided into chapters, so you don't have to watch the entire thing at one, one sitting. Uh, you can just very easily click on whichever work that uh, you're curious about. So I hope you enjoy it. But if we're talking about Ravel, uh, you cannot not mention <laughs> uh, his most famous piece, the Bolero. Uh, as well as his maybe other most famous piece, uh, the Pavan pour uh, une enfant defunte. I think I said that correctly. Uh, Pavan for a dead princess, uh, which actually is not as morose as it sounds. Uh, uh, she may be dead now, but it's actually talking about a princess who, dancing in a Spanish court, and it's it's portraying uh, uh, this old Spanish dance that uh, the princess would do, um, and it's it's a very uh, very nostalgic piece, uh, you know, played a lot, as is, of course, the Bolero, uh, iconic work uh, with, with the, the, um, the, uh, dun, da 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 dun, da 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 dun, da 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 dun, and, and you have that, that person on the percussion that just continues the whole piece, you know, like 20 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes. I, I've never understood how they are able to maintain that concentration. Uh, one of my favorite pieces when I was a kid, and I still love it, and uh, I, I'm not ashamed at all to admit that. Uh, for the Bolero, uh, my first recommendation goes back to my uh, earlier recommendation for Debussy, which was the Carrion disc, this wonderful Carrion coupling of the uh, La Mer and the Prelude à la Prémédie d'Enfant, uh, uh, as well as, La, you know, did I say it? La Mer as well? Um, it also includes the Bolero, uh, played very beautifully, uh, maybe a little bit longer than a lot of people do, but actually that is the way Ravel preferred it, and I, I think it works that be best that way when it, when, uh, it kind of builds slowly. And the orchestra sounds fantastic. Those Berlin strings, when they come in at the end, uh, it, it just really packs a punch. And this also comes with the second suite from Daphne and Chloe, which includes some of the best music uh, from that. So it's a really great uh, sort of starter disc for your, your two impressionist composers. Um, now for, uh, for the Pavan, I also want to mention one that... Uh, is coupled with the Daphne and Chloe I recommended with Manta. Uh, the London Symphony, they, they performed the Pavan. It's a very short work. Uh, and the nostalgic sentimentality of it, of the work comes out here, but it, it's done in a very subtle way, very, really beautiful, and just a lovely interpretation, very well recorded. Um, now, I do want to recommend uh, also for those two works, um, Another recording that is uh, an all Ravel uh, 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 set uh, it, that comes from Jean Martinon and the Orchestra de Paris uh, from 1974. Uh, really exciting. Uh, the Bolero is taken a, a shade faster, uh, but it's it's really exciting. Uh, just just wonderful virtuosic playing. And, and the Bavan is shaped very well. And, and like I said, this comes with an all Ravel disc, and so you, you can't go wrong with this one. Now, another set of all Ravel recordings that I want to finish with is, like Debussy, I mentioned Piero Coppola and those old pioneering recordings. Uh, we also have a set uh, of Ravel, and I especially want to highlight the Bolero. This is the very first recording of the Bolero, done in 1930. Uh, with, I don't even know who the orchestra was. I, th I think we don't really have it <laughs> identified, uh, but Ravel was there in attendance. So it has the stamp of authority, uh, which makes sense because he, real quick story, he very famously preferred a slower tempo. And when the work was first becoming known, uh, Arturo Toscanini insisted it has to go faster. And the two men actually had an argument backstage about it. Uh, Ravel actually refused to stand up when Toscanini acknowledged him to the audience afterwards. So there was that little feud that happened. So um, 
Obviously, Ravel felt very strongly about it. Uh, and here we do get the slower tempo with Coppola, uh, Coppola and I think it works great. Uh, I, I think the way it slowly builds uh, tension and power, uh, that mesmerizing effect of the piece, I, I think that's the way it obviously was intended. Uh, great character to the playing, too. And surprisingly well recorded for 1930. It actually is fairly clear. Uh, so... If you're interested in historical Ravel and historical Bolero, I, I think this is excellent, uh, as well as it includes uh, lots of other uh, Ravel as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, I hope you'll also take time to click the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I want to wish you all a great day and happy listening.